So my guess is if you've decided to attend this, you've had an occasion here uh, recently, or maybe sitting on your desk, some kind of request to look into what's termed extractables and leachable studies. So to that end, uh, I've kind of just take a look at what I'm going to try to address here. First, let's kind of talk a little bit about what's in a polymeric, uh, polymeric material. Try and take a stab at defining what an extractable and leachable is. E and L is, e is extractable, L is leachable. Talk a little bit about <clears throat> some basic risk analysis and routes of exposure. That is, how can a chemical, uh, how can you be exposed to a chemical? Uh, maybe some about uh, a little bit about what are the sources of extractors and leachables. Again, primarily focusing on polymeric materials. And then talk a little bit about the whys and what's of extractable and leachable study designs. And talk about the analytical chemistry that's involved in those study designs, because that's really the heart of what the problem is. Some of the guidances we can look at in setting up those designs, and uh, somewhat a little bit about how do you interpret uh, the results that you get from the studies. And then just kind of wind it up. So, <clears throat> If uh, most of the thrust is on the exposure to a medical device or a pharmaceutical, it's based primarily, we're going to focus this uh, talk on polymeric materials that are somehow at the interface between the packaging, perhaps the pharma packaging and the, and the active pharma ingredient or a medical device. But actually, this is just an extension of what's been going on for a long time in food contact notification, migration of chemicals into foods from packaging. So, if you just had the polymeric material itself, it would be no problem because the molecules are too big, which would cause a problem in the body. But in fact, the polymeric material has actually got a number of smaller molecules that have been added for various processes. So, in fact, that base material has got numbers of chemicals that can migrate from the polymer out into some sink that might be a concern for an exposure. So how do those compounds get introduced? Well, in the processing scheme, pigment can get introduced, plasticizer perhaps, maybe a slip agent of some sort, some kind of filler maybe, and an antioxidant perhaps. There could be other things also. And at the end of the processing, then you have a polymer that's loaded up to some very extent with um, various additives. So we need to talk a little bit about what is an extractable and what is a leachable as far as definitions go that are assessed by regulatory agencies perhaps, perhaps by internal, or internal portions of the company. But an extractable is defined as a compound that can be forced to migrate through some kind of fairly aggressive extraction conditions under extended time and elevated temperature and different solvents perhaps. So the point of extractables testing is to assess what can migrate from the polymer into the extracting solution. A leachable, on the other hand, is a compound that does migrate under some conditions of normal use. So perhaps on a stability study for pharma or if they place something into your body that actually does migrate from the polymer into your body. So extractables are, is a set of studies that are done to determine what might move from the polymer into, say, the body or food. And a leachable, in fact, is what actually does move. The problem with leachables is that about the only way you can assess that in truth is in a pharma product, focusing primarily now on the medical side of things. In a food, you could also. It's pretty difficult to get a human body and extract it and find out what has moved. So there's numbers of different reasons why this might be of concern. So perhaps uh, you have a medical device that's going to be implanted into the body. It might be somewhat of a risk if you had an unknown compound that could cause problems that would migrate from that device into your body. You might have a situation where you had a, say, a surgical face mask, a mask impregnated with some kind of material, and as you breathe in, it could migrate cause problems getting into the lungs. Or it could be that you're going to eat something and there would be a compound that was in what you were eating that could then get into the body and cause problems. Maybe injection. 
So you have a compound that somehow moved into a uh, 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 drug that's going to be injected into your body, cause problems, or similarly infusion. You're dripping something into your body, it's migrated from the packaging that's been holding the food that's being infused in, and that can cause problems. So there's a number of different reasons, and the thrust of the regulatory efforts for understanding reachables is to understand what compounds might be in something that could somehow uh, you could be exposed to that could cause a problem. You might even have a transdermal patch that goes on the body. Something's migrating over there and it gets dispersed throughout the body. It could cause problems in any number of different areas, even those locally placed. So how do you get compounds introduced? Well, under time, temperature, ambient temperatures, maybe compounds that exist in the packaging move in to the sink, which might be a blood plasma, it might be a pharmaceutical compound, it might be general bloodstream. Uh, again, packaging could be moving into food. This testing has been done for a long period of time on food contact. Or, in the case of the medical devices, there's a lot of sterilization techniques that go on. It's possible there that through the sterilization process, you could actually form a byproduct that, in fact, didn't originate at all as a chemical entity that ends up being a problem. So, we've got to talk about how do you go about setting up an extractables study? I mean, how do you choose the conditions you're going to extract under? what solvents, what temperatures, how long, etc. And I think a good starting place is to talk about an extraction solvent, something that you put this polymeric material into and then you're going to expose it to a solvent. What would you choose for the solvent and why? Well, you can take a look at drugs, for instance, they may be a hydrogel. And a hydrogel is composed of uh, part of the uh, compound that's likes water and a part that doesn't like water, so there's hydrophobic and hydrophilic parts. You may have, oh, let's say a food. Again, it's got water, flour, sugar, so there's a hydrophobic part, a polar part, and a non-polar part. Or maybe you have the human body. The human body's got blood coursing through it, lots of protein, so again, you've got a polar and a non-polar salt, primarily saline, 29% saline with a lot of protein. So when you design a study then, that pretty much dictates that you have to extract the materials in both a polar and a non-polar salt. And then you can question, well, how long do I do the extraction for? And under what conditions? And the conditions that we talk about usually are temperature, duration of the extraction, in what salt, and for how long, and at what temperature. Once you've done the extraction then, You've got these compounds that may have moved from that polymeric base into your extracting solvent. And then you have to go about beginning to look, if you will, to use analytical chemistry techniques to see what compounds moved, and if a compound did move, how much of it. 